Good day and welcome to my Campus Guide channel. Today, we are taking engine technology, engineering technology. This course is introduced to new engineers to introduce them to the concept of the engineering world. Some tools and some machines we use in the industrial field, how they operate some uses and they are relevant to we the young engineers. So let's take a look at a sample question of this course and how we will tackle them whenever we meet them. So our first question, we have been asked, We have been asked to state the name of the machine tool and label the parts C and D. So what machine tool is this? Is it your first time seeing it? Worry less. My campus guide is here to help you identify such machines, label them correctly. So this machine is a vertical milling machine. You can identify if it's vertical or horizontal through the hot, the head. So the part C is the vertical head and the part D. And the part D is the table. The vertical head and the part D is the table. So more or less, in the next slide, I'll give you a full diagram and a full labeling of the vertical and both the horizontal milling machine. But let's solve this one. Is it the C is the vertical head and the part D is the table. And the name of this machine too is what? A vertical milling machine. Let's go to the next question. Is it name, name, what is the name of the machine part in the figure eight below? State, and state the name of the machine to in the mechanical engineering workshop that employs this figure. So this figure there, the first question is name the machine part. So what machine part is this? The machine part is a two post. The two post is found inside what? A center lid. These two posts, it holds the two in position, the two that is doing what? The mechanism or doing the work in the center lid. It is clamped inside the hot, the two posts. So I is what name the machine part. The answer is it is a two post. And the second question is name the machine tool. The machine tool is what a center lead machine. The next question is you say insert the name of the appropriate machine tool you saw in the machine shop of the mechanical engineering workshop in the following sentences. The first, we have to determine what is the best machine for this work or these processes. The first process or function is a machine generally or commonly used to manufacture dietics. So what machine can do that for us? It's a shaping machine. Shaping machines are used to what? Manufacture GITs and other complex ships on a workpiece. The second one is a machine generally or commonly used to make multiple holes. Immediately you hear a multiple hole or drilling, then nothing comes in mind than what? A pillar drilling what? Machine. The next question is a machine generally or commonly used to make smooth flat surfaces. You want a smooth a smooth flat surface, then the surface grinding machine will help us to get such a smooth surface. The last one is what a machine generally used to manufacture threads on a short shaft. So for us to manufacture threads on a, a shaft, then we need what a center lead machine through some process like facing and turning to form what threads on the shaft. So these are the best machines that can do all these functions for us. But in case we may forget some of them, surface grinding machine or 
a pillar drilling machine, but it's like a last minute work, it's a stopped work, or you just won't write something, you don't remember this. Most of the times you do write the universal milling machine in place of these things, because the universal milling machine is able to perform almost all these functions. It can tend to operate vertically and horizontally. So if you have other processes other than this or other functions are given to you, then you have no idea what machine can do that. The first thing to come in mind is what? The universal melon machine. Let's go to the next one. So this is a slide or a whole diagram of both the vertical and the horizontal what? Melon machine. You can pause the video and watch them. We have the vertical, the vertical head, as you saw. So this part is what the ram. That's a C is a quail. D is a table. E is a saddle. F is what a cross feed handle. J. J is a vertical feed tank. And key, key is a knee. I, I is a vertical positioning screw. And G, G is the what? Is the base. It gives the machine a support. Whenever you identify any part to be a base, that's the function. No, nothing else, nothing more. It gives support to the what? To the machine. K, K is what? K is a column. It's a column and M is the hot. The table transmission. That's M over here. Table transmission. You can pause the video, have time for all the parts, make them familiar to you so that you will not fumble whenever you meet any of them, either the vertical or the horizontal. The next question we have been asked to write the name of the machine to write the name of the machine to show in figure I. So what machine tool is this? It's the most famous machine tool at the engine technology lab. So this machine tool is what? It's a center lead machine. Center lead machine. So we write that. The center lead machine. The next question, you have been told to label the part as indicated by the letters A to what K in the figure I, write the appropriate names of this machine parts. So let's identify some. The first one, E. Did you just say it? E. e is what? Yes, E is the headstock. E is a headstock. And B, B is the jaw chalk. A jaw chalk. So let me try and give some functions of this part. A is the hot, the head stock. The head stock, what does it do? It houses the hot, the driving mechanism of the machine. So if you are being told to give some of these simple functions, that's what you see. A is the head stock. It houses the driving mechanism of the machine. B is a hot, is a jaw chalk, jaw chalk. So that's where the work piece is what. It's clamped or it hold the work, the work piece. C is a what? It's a two post. You already found this in our first or previous question that what machine is this? So that's the machine, that's the two post. The two post, it holds the machine what? The two in position, the two that is doing the machining, it holds it in what? In position. Some of them, some diagrams also has what? A coolant over the hot, the two post. When I say a coolant, you know this thing is used for machining and it contains a tool. And most, most of the times all these um, tools, they work on metals. So the work this is a metal, the two post is also a very hard metal. So upon machining on or operation, they get heated up. So most of the times some diagrams will have a coolant or some tube over it. So whenever you see a diagram and it's not this, and there is a tube over it, then you can say that one is what a coolant supply or is a supply of 
something to cool it down. This idea may not be that clear or that nice for you. I have a full video on center lead on this channel. You can pause this video right now and search in the videos. You see a full video of a center lead. I'll tell you its mode of operation. And you see a clear video and other simulations about this machine too. So you can check it out for yourself or after this video. So the part D is a hot, it's a compound slide. That one is used to for taking what depth of cut, a depth of cut when facing. So we just use the compound slide to take what depth of cut. You have a cross slide. You also have a carriage. The carriage it travels over the hot, the bed. This is the late bed. And this is what carriage. The carriage is what F. So it travels over what the bed. The tail stock. What does the tail stock do? You see this pin here or this sharp is used for drilling hot. It's used for drilling holes. That's one function of it. That's the tail stock. It's used for drilling holes. And also, whenever we are machining any part or any work piece inside the door shop, we bring this tool support closer to give the support, the work piece support. So it's two functions. It's used for drilling holes, and it also gives the work piece support when we are doing what we are machining. The last one is what? The lead bed. The lead bed. So this is the bed, which is what? Each. The lead bed. So you will see the lead bed hot. It gives support to the hot, the head stock, the carriage, and the hot, the tail stock, the head stock, the carriage, and the hot tail stock. So that's the function of the bed, which is what each. So some of you just hear bed and you start feeling this, please. You can write it's a hot elite bed instead of writing just a bed. <laughs> the next question is I. I is what? It's a lead screw. So we see some rods here. The first rod, the third, but first, when it comes to identify, the first one is a lead screw. And the second one is what? It's a feed shaft. So for you to identify them, the lead screw, it has what threads on it, thread or marks on it for easy identification. So if they didn't give you a picture and they give you a diagram, a pencil diagram or some diagram without a clear picture like this. You can see the lead screw with what? With marks or threads on it. And J, J is what? It's a feed shaft, feed shaft, lead screw. And the last one, K, is an what? An apron. So the feed, the feed shaft, which one? The feed shaft, the J, that one, it's what? It controls the movement of the carriage on the bed when what? Turning the feed shaft controls the movement of the carriage when we are out, we are turning. And the lead screw, they, I told you they are hot, there are threads on it. That screw, so it supports in what turning, whatever hard screws can turn around. So the lead screw controls the movement of the carriage when we are hot, cutting screw hot thread, cutting screw thread. So let's go to our next question. The next question is what? Write the appropriate name of the two milling hot machine. So this is a horizontal milling machine, and this is a vertical. I always tell you, you use the head of the milling machine or the machine part to determine if it's a horizontal or a vertical. You check where the hot, the two poses, the two poses of that machine, or the machine, the part that is performing the real hot machine, or the where the driving mechanism of that machine tool is what located. So you see this part, you see the driving mechanism is located here. here. So the elbow is what horizontal, so it's a horizontal milling machine. And this is a vertical what, milling machine, you see the vertical head. Let's go on. And if it's your first time joining us on this channel, please don't forget to subscribe to my Campus Guide channel. We are here to support all of us with the young engineers. If this video is helpful to you, please share it to a friend and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. So this question is, we have been asked to list five types of fire extinguishers. I have some here for you. 
we have what a specialist dry powder so you can write dry powder fire extinguisher you can write what foam fire extinguisher water mist fire extinguisher water speed fire extinguisher wet chemical carbon dioxide what fire extinguisher all these are types of what fire extinguishers the next question state the function state the institution of state responsible for the compliance of what industrial act so what institution in the country is responsible of what compliance in what industrial act me i think is the what international labor what organization ilo the international labor organization or nationally i would say the what the nlc which is what the national labor commission that's what i think if you think of anything else or you heard of anything else or you have a source that is giving you a different information don't forget to leave it in the comment section we are all learning here on this channel the next question is a label the diagram shown below first of all you have to know what diagram is this or what machine tool is this what machine tool is this then it's a hot it's an air compressor an air compressor what is an air compressor is any machine that takes atmospheric air at a very low pressure discharge it at a very high hot pressure so that's the function of an hot an air compressor so this one too if you are not seeing the picture clear they are just squares and simple shapes squares single um circles and other rectangles but if you want a row diagram of the what you want a row diagram of the air compressor my campus guide has a full video on what air compression system the stages in air compression the uses of what compress air and others check it you can pause this video and check it and what and come back later on or after this video you can check it out so let's label the part to so i is what the inlet what valve its function is what it takes atmospheric air into the hot compressor at a very low pressure i i is a hot a pump so this whole part is hot it's a pump that's where the compression is what is done a pump a pump with a motor so two is a pump so you can see five is a hot is a motor but you see the motor consists of what both the pulleys and the belt so you can see this is a pulley the fit one the round one is a pulley two pulleys and a belt but you can also write it as a what as a motor you can take the one you trust it's a pulley or a motor and the fourth one is what a belt and the third one too is a what it's a discharge tube discharge tube say the second one is a what is a pump and with every pump we have a condenser on it it condenses the what the atmospheric uh, that came into the hot compressor so we've talked about the fifth one so the sixth one the sixth one is what is a voltage regulator it regulates the voltage or tells you the voltage of the what working pump or the motor in progress the eighth one the eighth one is what a pressure gauge pressure gauge and the tenth one is a what air outlet valve after compressing the air you would like to what deliver it into your various destination you have to open the hot air outlet valve to help you deliver or take this compressed air to its location the 11th one is a hot is a hole the hole discharges the compressed air to its various host destination that's the hole we are not to, to label it in our heart, in our table. So that's why I wrote it over there. The 12th one, this is a what is a receiver. It contains the compressed what air. It contains the compressed air or it stores the compressed air for future what usage. And the last part is what the, the tank drain valve. Tank drain valve. It performs a very critical or a safety function you see atmospheric um, atmospheric air 
contains some amount of what moisture. And this moisture, we need a compressed air. Like we don't need what moisture of um, or a combination of water and air. And wherever there is atmospheric oxygen and water, there will be what corrosion. So when this air is also admitted into the air compressed um, air compressor system, and it is not evacuated or it is not discharged, this receiver will what corrode. And trust me, we will lose our machine in no time. So for this reason, the tank drain is here to discharge what any water that gets inside the hot inside our air compressing system. So the tank drain discharges what moisture or accumulated water inside the air compressing system. We also have other parts which is the safety valve and others. Check the video on the channel. You can pause this and watch this after that to continue or after this video. We have a full clear picture of an air compressor on this channel. Thank you. Let's go to the next question. What is the name of this figure? It's what an air compressor. The next question is state four uses of air compressed air. So after we've compressed this air, uh, what can we use? Let's look at some, some simple functions. The first one is what? For inflating tiles. Inflating tiles. So we use this compressed air to inflate tiles. If you don't inflate the towel at a very high um, pressure, I don't think you can do it. Doing it at a low pressure will take so much time. So we do this inflating of towels at a very high pressure. It's also used in hot cleaning, as in pressure hot cleaning. For pressure cleaning, those um, rolling carpet and others, we use something called pressure cleaning. So the detergent or this mixture of so whatsoever in your machine should come out at a very high pressure so that it can remove the dirt in the hot, in the wheeling carpet. The next one is what is used in what? Breaking system. Breaking is used in breaking system. Breaking system as in cars. At the automobile shop, you'll be told that there are some types of what? Breaking system. You have the hydraulic breaking system and the pneumatic breaking system. So we are talking about the what? The pneumatic pneumatic breaking system. This pneumatic vehicles, they use this what compress air to stop. So you see a car will just stop and hear sound like, yes, these sounds are what, as a result of compressed air in action. So that's the mechanism the big trucks and vehicles uses to what, brake. The last one is what, spraying. So some sprays deposited on cars or other parts, they spray it, at a very high pressure. So for you to do that, you need a compressed air or a compression mechanism to do this pressure what spraying. Let's go to the next question. We are being told to do what? Name and label the measuring instrument. No, I don't have that question yet. The next question is use an arrow, use an arrow to match the voltages to the appropriate supply in the boxes what below. So we have been given some voltages, some name of voltages here, and the value. So we have to match it to the, the right one. So whenever you are given said question, what must come in mind is what you have to know which of them that carries the highest in that order. You have to do it either ascending or what descending. So let's start from the top. So which one carries the highest is the what transition voltage. Don't play with the transition voltage line. In our next question, you get a picture of some of these trans, uh, transmission voltage water line. You don't play with them, they carry power. They can take you, <laughs> you move from a solid state to what? Ash state. <laughs> you can burn within some few seconds, second. don't play. Don't go under any transmission line, taking selfies or TikTok videos, you will die. <laughs> Please, they contain what? Thousand. Um, 161,000 volts, which is a volt you can imagine. 161,000 volts. So that's for what? Transmission voltage. So after that, the next highest voltage is what? 11,033,000. So you ask yourself, which of these can carry that? Is it a high voltage distribution, a single phase, three phase? So yes, it's a three phase industrial voltage. 
that's the only one that can carry out 11,000 and 33,000. The next question, what, what can carry 415? Yes, so 415 volt, it's carried by what a high voltage distribution um, line. So high voltage distribution will take what 415 and then it will be stepped down to our level in our various home point uh, domestic what use. So 240 volts are coming to our, our various homes. So single phase voltage domestic will take out 240. Let's go to the next question. It says, label the diagram shown below. Indicate the names against the appropriate. So it's already in the box. So the first one is what? It's a blue one. B is a what? It's a fan. C is a, com it's a compressor. D is a what? A condenser. E is a what? An evaporator. And F is a what? It's a thermostat. So this um, part, the, this four parts, compressor, condenser, evaporator, they form what? They form the refrigeration system or the refrigeration system. Both the refrigeration system is very similar or same to the hot, the air, air conditioning system. So you find all these parts also in the hot and um, a refrigerator. You perform most, most the same function or they operate under the same mechanism. So you can also meet a question as, what is the heart of the refrigeration system? So we take the compressor to be the heart of the hot, the refrigeration hot system. Let's go to our next question. Use the refrigeration cycle in figure 12 to name the following components. So what components do you have? Component one, you have compressor, condenser, filter, evaporator, and a hot, and a dryer. So which, which part is the condenser, the compressor, or what? We have to know them. This cycle is a simple cycle, so let's label them. Some of them, we don't just write the names that there's a compressor, there's this. Otherwise, you will never know or have a clear picture of how the questions are being what, set or being put. So this is how the question will be presented. So the first one is what? It's a compressor the heart of the refrigeration or the cycle, a compressor. After compression, it will come to what? Condensing. So this is a what? Two is a what? A condenser. So whenever it's condensed, it needs to be what? Dried. It needs to be dry up there and there should be a refrigerant what? Flow. So this part, which is the gene, is a what? It's a dryer. This part, this part is what? It's a dryer. And three is a what? metering device, metering device, so metering. I didn't write them because I didn't want you to be picturing the answers, otherwise you can forget all what you learned. So I want you to write them down yourself so that you remember it whenever you need it. Three is what metering device and four is what is an evaporator. So four evaporator, three is a what a metering device, J is a what a dryer and it's where the refrigerant flow start. So that's a dryer, a condenser, and a hot, a compressor. Let's go to the next question. The next question is, we should underline the correct answer. So a car uses a four-stroke engine. The four strokes are hot. I is hot intake compression, ignition and exhaust. I, I rotation, injection, ignition and exhaust. I, I, I injection, carburation, Rotation and exhaust. Which of them do you think is the answer? It's I. Every engine what takes what? Uh, in, in, it takes intake or some other boost to call it what? Induction. So intake or induction, compression, ignition or what? Power. So sometimes you may not see ignition, you see what? Power. So ignition or power and what? Exhaust. So the right answer is what? The right answer is what? Intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust. The next question: A car convert convert fuel into what? Should I answer this one? Let tell me your answer in the what in the comment section. If you don't know the answer, to holler me in the comment section, and I'll see. I'll answer all the questions, but I want this class to be very interactive. Tell me what you think this answer is in the comment section. Please do so for me. Let's go to the next question. You see. A turbocharger is what? 
Is it your first time hearing it? Yes, it will be heard in the automobile shop. So what is the function of a turbo charger? Let's make it fast and save time. So the main function of, of this turbo charger is what? It compresses air traveling in the hot, in the engine. So this is the answer B. It's a turbine that compresses the air traveling in the hot, in the engine. You see, the next question is what? From your answer in question 27A, state, state the what? Two possible firing orders. Ah, okay, firing order two. When you say firing order, you see these engines, they contain cylinders. An engine can contain four cylinders, some contain five, some in the bridge ship and others. So for these cylinders, they, they in stroking, eh? in stroking, they all don't move together. They have an order they follow to what to move. So this is the concept about what firing order. If you are into mechanical engineering or automobiles, you can have time to learn about these things. It is very needed when you want to understand such what concept. So some examples of firing orders are out. One, three, four, two, firing order, and one, two, what? Four, three. One, three, four, two, firing order, and one, two, four, three, what? Firing order. The next question is what? Name figure 13 and state which workshop or laboratory you studied that unit. Let me clear this from my drawings here. Figure 13 is what? It's an engine block. It's a vein type engine block. So you can specify it or you can just see it's a what? Vein type in you. Hey, it's an engine block. But if you are too serious like me, <laughs> You can see it's about vein type. You see the shape I'm drawing here. It's vein. All these cylinders you are finding here, you find the same, the same four at this line too. So when you watch it from this side, you see there is some vein shape here. We have some types of engine by the arrangement. You can also find time and learn about it. The vein type, the inline arrangement, and others. So this is what is a. Um, an engine block. So the answer is an engine block, but you can go ahead and say a vein type engine block. The next question is what to label the component in figure hot 14. So what component is this? It's a hot piston, piston and connecting rod assembly. Piston and connecting rod assembly. So let's label the part. This what the head is what is a piston. This is a piston and this is the what connecting rod and they are joined together by a pin called what a piston what pin the next question is what complete the wiring diagram of a solar system in figure 15 below by joining the what the correct connection terminal you know if you connect the wrong terminal to um a, a, a wrong system the solar system will never work so you have to know where you are connecting your parts. So let's start connecting. The first part on the solar control is what is the solar. So you have to connect the solar itself. So whenever you are giving said question, make sure you use a ruler to make it work very nicely. Me, I can use a ruler here. I'm using a pen. So the positive of the solar will go to the positive word terminal. And the negative will go to what the negative. Whenever you are giving a question, make sure you read the question what very well. Because somebody will see this and will have time to draw this what on his answering paper again, which is a waste of time. You are being told to what complete the diagram by what joining the correct what connecting terminal. So no need to do what draw on another sheet or something. You have to complete it on this sheet. So please, we have to read each and every question what very well. Here is what the battery. So the battery positive terminal will go to what? Positive. Negative to what? Negative. Good. So the problem is here, the load. The load, the light is the load. And for the light to operate, sometimes it needs what? A switch. So that's where most of the time it gets a problem. So this part will go here, the positive. We'll join the positive over here, like this. And you will connect this part of it 
to this end of the hood of the light like that. One, so you continue from here to here, two. So this is a complete hood. Diagram, circuit diagram or circuit connection for a solar system. Please, you can pause the video and try it yourself. Okay, at the beginning of the video, let me clear this so that I can take a snapshot or can pause the video and try it yourself and you know where all these things are, out, are going. Let's continue very fast. Our next question. Our next question is what? We are being told to do what? Electricity generated at a power plant gets to its consumers through cables and other devices. We should state the name of these electrical devices and equipment what below. So these were the transmission lines I told you about. Sometimes you find them isolated in the forest or some countryside. Don't play with them. They carry what power. Remind yourself of the voltage we say they carry. What do we say? We said what they contain what? One six one thousand volts. So that is enough to kill you in some few femtoseconds. Don't play with electricity. So this is a what transmission line, which is C transmission line, and B is a what a substation transformer. Or you can say transformer hot substation. And this is a what distribution line, or you say it's a transformer. I don't know what they are talking about. So if it's this one they are talking about, you see this one is what. Is a distribution line, but if it's this small thing they are talking about, I'll say it's a what? It's a transformer. So choose the appropriate answer for yourself. There's a diagram there. You say this is a substation transformer, and you are saying this one is a what? It's a transmission line, which is C, and A is a what? It's a transformer. I labeled this equipment here. So, so I don't know to if. You have to label the hot distribution line, but I think this one is a hot, is a transformer. Let's go to the next question. This next question is very critical and demands attention. We are to list the order in which the following electrical component A to G listed below will be connected from electricity generated at a power plant could, so, could be hot supply to a household. Yes. The, this first question or per this question is what 14 marks. So it's enough mark to afford you something nicer. So let's see, we have a main switch, a CCU control, con consumer control unit, a distribution line, a service cable, a transformer substation, a transmission line, and a hot energy meter. So we have to arrange them in order. It is done over here. So the first one, I always tell you, make sure you do the highest, which of them co contains the hot, the highest voltage, and you do that in what in order. So this is the order. You can pause the video and have a look at it. A transmission line, a transformer substation, from transformer substation, come to what distribution line, a service cable, an energy meter, the main switch, and the hot. And it comes to the CCUs. It comes to our homes. That's the meter we find the CCU. So transmission line to a transformer substation. It will step now again to what a distribution line and to a service cable, to energy meter, to a main switch, and to what CCU. Let's go to the next question. Now our room. We have the following appliances, and operate them in daily basis. We have to determine our our daily energy what consumption in what hour and what kilo what hour. So let's see the table. We have the appliances, the power in what, and the time in what hours. So you have to provide what, what hour. This is so simple. We have what, and we have hour, and we are saying what, what hour. So if you have no idea, you have to know here, we combine them what, together. So just do what, multiply. So you multiply what, 100 by 14. You write it here. Some of them, I, I've told you already that I don't want to write the answers here. Otherwise, some, somebody will meet this question somewhere one day and would like to picture what I wrote here. But it may be some different figures or they will give you different hours or value for this and you write the wrong thing. So you multiply whatever in power, only if it's in what, and here it's in the eyes, you multiply them. So 100 times what, 14,400, 
2,000 times what half, which is what 1,000. Yes, you write all these figures here. After that, you sum them from refrigerator to what compact, compact what fluorescent lamp. You add them all and you write the total here. So the total you get is what is the answer for what watt hour, and you divide your answer by 1,000 is the answer for what kilowatt hour. Let's continue. Kilowatt hour. So the next question, you have to determine what machine two is what is this? Is what this machine two is a what is a radial or drilling machine? Radial drilling machine. It's also it can operate drilling or can be doing drilling in different directions or different shape. It can do it horizontally and under vert vertically. It also looks like the universal milling machine, but this is what is a radial drilling machine. The next question is what indicates the type of screw driver appropriate for this screw head. Whenever you see just a single line through the screw or it's a horizontal line like this, then you have to use the word the slotted or the what the flat screw driver. Whenever you see a star like this, a star consisting of what? She's um she's corners. Yes, she's corners. Then you have to use what the tox, the tox screwdriver. Tox, but you see some of the star. This star is what you see. Yes, that's how I can identify it. Like it's in the shape of a star, but some of them you see she's corners, but they are not star, they are drawn with what straight line, they are not in the shape of a star. Then that one use was hex. This is the last one. They did. You see, it's, it also has six quarters. But that one it does not look like a star. This one is drawn, but this one straight lines at the edges. So that one use a hex or what an allen key. But this one use what talks. The next one, when you see plus or a cross, then you use what a Phillips or a what a cross slot screwdriver. When you see plus, it's what a cross slot screwdriver. We have other um, head, screw heads. You can find out and know the appropriate screwdriver you use. The next question is what? Write the appropriate paper against this component. So this whole thing is what engine. <coughs> Sorry. And this whole thing is engine. And this is the what engine block. And we know the engine block is separated from the head by what a head what a gasket. So this thing is a what is a gasket, and this one is the what head cylinder head. So this is the cylinder head, the head gasket, and the what engine block. Next question: split the color code used to identify oxygen and acetylene. Acetylene for what? How is the acetylene welding? Do you remember how the acetylene welding? <laughs> if you don't remember, let's do a recap. I don't have a video on welding yet. Let's do a recap. We have two types of welding. We have what electric arc welding and what of the acetylene type of what welding. And we are being asked to tell the color code. We need this color code to know. This is sometimes you see these bottles or these cylinders around, and some of them oxygen is not written on it or acetylene is not written on it. So you have to know the color code for this was gas so that you will not give the oxygen valve to the acetylene. Something may happen you don't like. And these valves or these triggers are made to take those what, those gases. So you may not operate as you want. So oxygen it has what a blue color and acetylene has what a red or what maroon color. That's yes, that's a spirit of a maroon. So oxygen blue and acetylene bottles, they have maroon color code. The next question. The next question is, how many types of flames are employed in what? Oxy acetylene world. How many types of flame? Do you remember? Yes, we have three types of flame in what? Oxy acetylene type of world. Even if you forget these flames or their names, you use the name of the what? The type of world to remember them. Oxy what? Acetylene welding. So the types of flame are what? Oxidizing. You take it from the oxy. Oxidizing flame and what? Carburizing. And we have what? The neutral 
flame, the three types of flame. So this, the answer for this is what, three, you just want three, three flames, three types of flames. But if you want to label them, we have what, the oxidizing flame, the neutral flame, and the capillarizing. Let me give you a trick about how to identify these things. The trick is oxidizing. Whenever you hear oxidizing, you can hear the sound of oxy or oxygen from what oxidizing. So that one you say what we open more oxygen than what acetylene. And when you hear what carburizing, if carburizing um, oxidizing, we open more oxygen than acetylene. Then for carburizing, you open what more acetylene than what oxygen. So capillarizing, because we open more acetylene than oxygen, is used for what hardening purposes. And oxidizing is used for what grazing what purposes. And the, the last part of type of flame is what the neutral flame. What does the neutral flame use like? We open equal amount of what oxygen and what acetylene. That's why it's called neutral. So neutral flame open equal amount. Oxidizing flame open more oxygen than what acetylene. Carburizing flame, you open what more acetylene than what oxygen. Let's go to the next question. The next question you are being told to do what? You are being told to draw a typical oxidizing flame. So you draw something like a cone like this. A cone like this. You have to make sure and know that the oxidizing flame has what a pointed what inner cone. So that's what they will check whenever they are marking. You make sure your inner cone is what is pointed and you draw some lines here to indicate what the flame. You can never indicate a flame without telling us what the temperature of it. So for oxidizing flame, its temperature is what? 311 what? 5, 311 5 degrees Celsius. 311 degrees Celsius, 3115. So let's go to the next question. You say we have to label the part and tell the name of this equipment. It's what? It's a steam boiler. It's a steam boiler. So let's label the part. The part D is what? It's a main steam outlet valve. Whenever we generated the steam in the steam boiler, we need to what? Release it to its destination. So we have to open the main steam outlet valve to lead this what? Um, steam generated inside the steam boiler to eat various what destination so let's go to the what the main safety valve we are hearing what main what safety valve so meaning it perform what a safety a safety function whenever whenever the um the steam inside the steam boiler it reaches its um steam pressure steam limit you see it has a pressure gauge so whenever this pressure gauge it reaches its steam limit or the pressure generated in the hot in the steam boiler is very high, you have to um, open the hot main steam outlet valve for this accumulated pressure to be. But if you don't do that and this pressure is still accumulated inside the machine, the machine gets the step and the pressure is too much for it. So it will open, this main safety valve will open automatically. So sometimes, it is connected to what a chimney it is connected to a chimney at its side or it is covered by a chimney so it will open automatically to release the what the system for its accumulated pressure or the steam inside it to leave otherwise something bad may hurt may happen so the main safety valve what, it opens automatically for accumulated steam to what to leave so if you don't open if you don't open it or you don't open the main steam uh, outlet valve and the steam is accumulated in it, that one won't open. We have what a steam pressure gauge. It tells us the pressure accumulated inside the hot, inside the steam boiler. That's the steam pressure gauge. It indicates the amount of steam built in the hot, in the steam chamber. The steam pressure gauge indicates the amount of steam built inside it. The next one is what the combustion chamber or the combustion chamber. That's where all the mechanisms are what are done. Combustion chamber. So what happens inside the combustion chamber? That's where all the processes are what they are done. 
combustion engine. It contains some parts that's where oil is spilled over the water or the liquid inside the hot inside um, the steam boiler. So that's what the where the combustion and other complex processes are hot. Okay, so we have a control box or a control panel. Control box or a control panel. So the control box it contains is an electrical gadget which sends information to the what to the to the attendant or the operator. So you see lights and other indicators on, indicators on it. So whenever you see red under maybe short of water, you know that my system is losing water or it is losing fuel or others. So it sends information to the hot attendant or the operator. The next one is the hot, the water gauge, the water gauge. The water gauge also, it tells us the amount of level. It indicates the amount of water that have been pumped inside the hot, the boiler. The water gauge indicates the amount of water pumped inside the hot, the boiler. Let me clear my drawings. And let's go to the next question. You see what? Write down the name of the appropriate machining process. All these processes, they are under hot, center lead. So the processes are hot, straight turning. So this guy writes turning. Whenever you see the arrow like this, it's turning. And this one is hot, facing. So turning and hot, facing. Now, next question, let's label this part, these tools in what technology. In, the question says, or indicate the type of tool shown in the figure below by writing their name. So what is this? You have to check the end of the hot, the hammer. You just don't look at the mat like this and you write, it's a hammer, it's a ballpoint hammer or what. You have to check the other end. So you see something like a claw here. So this is a hot, it's a claw hammer. The next one is what? Is a hand drill, so electric hot hand drill. This is a hot hacksaw, hacksaw, a ball pin hammer. This is a hot gen clamp, gen clamp. This is a hot hand file. Next one, a pair of divider. This is what chisel. It's, it's given in different um, direction. That's why I see like this. So this is a chisel. This is what set of spanners. This is what a pipe wrench. Please take a look at it. It's not what it's not a spanner, it's a pipe wrench. So you have to take a look at it. It's a pipe wrench. This is what an open end spanner. The difference between this and this is what this it has both ends what open. So this is what open end spanner, and this is what an adjustable spanner. Adjustable spanner. You can adjust this part of the um, this part of the spanner. So that's why it's called an adjustable spanner. And this is what a flat or slotted screwdriver, flat or slotted screwdriver. This is what an Allen King, Allen King. And this is what a Phillips, see the mat, it has plus or cross. So it's what a Phillips screwdriver. So take time, you can pause the video and make sure you identify all these things. We have other parts, you have to also want to look for the, the long nose plier and others. So take time and identify all this on your own, on your own. Let's go to some heavy equipment. Just know the name of these equipment. They may be of help some other time. As an engineer, you don't go to some industry to work or you don't find yourself home and your daddy will be like, hey, my new engineer. So what machine is this? And you'll be like, oh, all these machines are called heavy cars. So you have to know the name of these machines. So the one with what a chain tile is what a bulldozer. This is what a back hoop. This is what a grader. This is what a, a sheep road ruler. Sometimes you call it sheep, sheep ruler, sheep road ruler. So it's a road ruler, excavator, a dump truck. So take a critical look of all these, all these what. But pause the video and identify them yourself. The next one too is the hot, a feet ruler. And this one too is the hot, it's a Casagandi. Is it your first time seeing it? It is fine at the civil lab. Yes, Casagandi. It's used for some tests, Casagandi. So you can be even giving this to what label it. You have to know this is called what? A Casagandi. This part is the hot, it's a Casagandi cap to determine, it's used for determining some, some tests. Um, plastic limit test, yes. 
So the test is taken on what 25 volt blues. We determine it on the what on the 25 volt blues. So I would like to end here. Thank you for staying with me all this while. If this this video was very helpful and gave you a new idea or it 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 told you something you didn't know before, please just do me a favor by introducing this channel to another friend, another engineer. We look forward to bringing you more resources and more information to help you in your study in the engineering field. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to my Campus Guide channel. Bye.